hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charters here. Now, I have some people tell me that, Uncle Charters, it's so cringy when you call us niece and nephews. Well, let me tell you something. I got teenagers living in my house, they are my children, and every time I tell a dad joke, they tell me how cringy I am all the time, and it doesn't stop me, and neither will this. Alright, so let's talk about the S&P 500. Here's the flow sentiment. All right, from Cheddar Flow. All right, I have it filtered for 500K premiums or above, and it's pretty much bearish as usual. All right, 74% in the puts, 26% in the calls. All right, if I do expiration date within one month, it's a little less bearish, but still overall bearish with the calls going up 41%. All right, so big money is still overall bearish. Now, all right, that's my general chat. Here is the SPY updates, the room where I put all of my updates and plans for SPY and trade ideas, okay? So this morning, I felt compelled to write a nice quote. Cutting loss or respecting your stop loss is the cost of business, like any other business. And if you're not willing to pay it, you will pay it with your entire account sooner or later. It's very good advice, all right? I definitely needed that. I'm going to say why. All right, but I had a couple of plans today, the bull case scenario and the bear case scenario. They both kind of played out today, all right? So the first, the bull case was SPY is currently at the 411.98 as of writing this because I wrote it early at 7.44 a.m. This means the 49.5 to 4.10 zone is first and critical support. Look for calls when a resistance level is cleared, starting with 412, 413.5, 415, then 416, the breakout level. Above 416, we can possibly get a two plus leg move with 418.5 and 420 above. Didn't quite hit those levels today, but most of my levels got hit as far as the bull case. All right, the bear case, I'll be interested in getting puts if 49.5, 410 support fails. Targets below are 48.5, 47, then 45.5. All right, I was looking at this, this bull flag or whatever flag that is. All right, we're going to talk about that flag in a little bit. But that's pretty much the plan. Look for calls above 410. Look for puts below 410. All right, or the zone. So we're looking on the 15 minute chart here, okay? I know I always make it sound simple, but trading is not always that simple. All right? Today, Uncle Charter, as far as his trade goes, was one for three. I was one for three. And I, I tried my best to follow my strategy. And sometimes, you know, they don't work out. Okay, which is why it was so important for me to respect my stop loss, which is why I'm so glad I wrote that quote this morning because it wasn't just a message to my Discord members, it was also a reminder to myself. Okay, so I'm、um, looking here, SPY opened up below the 49 to 410 zone. That's my orange line. So off rip, it was bearish, okay, and it did drop down very close to the 47、uh, support level that I had. But then it recaptured around 10 o'clock. I bought that recapture around the 410, not the 48.5 like I should have, but I entered on the 410 to 49 zone because, well, it was my plan for the day. All right? I usually don't recommend plans to my members unless I would do it myself. All right? I tried it, and well, as you can see, I got stopped out. Lost a couple hundred dollars on that one. All right? So it dropped. This candle dropped. It hit, dropped all the way down to the 47 level. Very critical level, that level, because the previous day you can see right here that, that we had a couple of bounces off that level and it held and it triggered some upside. And today it did as well. So 4.7 bounced, okay? But keep in mind, in hindsight, I can say, yeah, 4.7 triggered the up move. I'm trading in real time. I didn't know all this was going to happen just yet, okay? So because it was bearish, this was a false breakout for the 4.10 level, we lost 4.8.5. I figured we'd get a bounce of 4.7 and backtest 4.8.5 as a resistant. Remember my backtest and goal strategy? All right. And I tried it. When it came up and tested 4.8.5 4, as a resistant, initially it did get a little selling pressure and I entered puts. But as you can see, that candle did not work out for, well for me either because we recaptured that level. That's a false breakdown. Stopped out. Lost a couple, another couple hundred dollars on that. And here you can see that back tested that 48.5 level as a support before heading up higher. And here on my third trade, finally it worked out for me. I got the recapture. Like the same, it was the same plan as my first trade, only this time it actually worked out. Okay, I'm trying to be consistent and follow the strategy no matter what, no matter how emotional I get. So we got it, got the breakout, and it start, I started shaving off profits around the 412 level. Around the 413.5 level, and was able to ride up all the way up to 
had a runner up to full 15.5 ish and i missed that last pump of the day but you know what that's what real time trading is about this is what real trading is about it's not always that's how it is it's not always going to be perfect sometimes we enter late sometimes we um enter early, uh, exit early sometimes we make all the right decisions and it still doesn't work out all right i think the best decision i made today for myself was respecting my stop loss because on that last trade i made a little, i made a little over 20 to twenty three hundred dollars so made up for the losses so i was very grateful all right so that's my trade that was my plan it worked out pretty well wasn't easy but it definitely did and here's a daily chart all right as always i zoom out so you guys can see my multi-year trend line in this bull flag that i'm tracking but within that bull flag there are some levels that i'm watching as well because i am a level to level trader day trader to be exact all right if the spy is moving two three four plus dollars in a day what's the point of me waiting for the next day to take profit market makers don't want me to take profits so i'm going to take my money and run that's why i love to day trade okay so as you saw before i was zooming out i have fibonacci levels uh from the march 2020 low to the january 2022 high also have fib levels from the january uh starting from the january 2022 high down to the may 2022 low okay so now that SPY has cleared some really critical levels, all right, because that 416 level that I mentioned earlier was a very critical level, okay? If you look back here, back to this 15-minute chart, and I zoom out, I was watching this flag pattern, all right? I don't, I'm not sure what the proper term for the flag pattern is, but just look at the yellow lines, all right? I'll make it thicker, okay, so you guys can see the yellow lines. I know there's a lot of lines, but pay attention to the yellow lines, all right? I was watching that flag today. I was talking to my group all day about that. All right. And as you can see, it tested it. It filled out the rest of the flag. It broke out. And that's what triggered that up move from a, from a technical analysis price action perspective. That The breakout, that little squeeze at the end of the day was no coincidence. It was a breakout. That's around the 416 level. Okay. So now that we cleared that 416 level, breaking out of that intraday flag pattern, 418.5 is in play okay that is based off the uh 30 i think it's a okay that's the 23.6 retracement level based on my fib levels from the march 2020 low to the j 2022 high and it's also my fib level around that zone 48 418.4 ish actually okay from the january 2022 high down to the may 2022 low okay that's an area of confluence that level will be a very critical level to watch that level was also broken down back on May 5th. And what is what losing that level triggered a nice, a massive down move. Never quite got a proper back test. Tomorrow, it's possible because we are so close to it. I doubt the market makers aren't going to just test it at the very least. Okay? So we have to watch that level very carefully. If we get the breakout, that's a massive win for the bulls. Okay, and you see this blue trend line right here that I got? It connects March 20, uh, 29th high to the April 21st high. We could pop, if we could clear 418.5, I do have some resistance around 420. But that 426 level, or 426.5 level, is the resistant level of this downtrend line. Okay, so we could test those. Okay, 418.5, 420. I think I, ha I have to double check. Let me see. Yeah. For, and then above that could be a nice squeeze up. Okay. Yeah. I figured there was another level. That's I was lo also looking at the 50-day moving average, which is currently around 424.5. Okay. So those are my next level, my upside targets. 418.5, 420, probably 421 as well. 424.5-ish. That's around the 50-day moving average and a critical test. Of this downtrend line around 426.5. If that level is breaking out. If that level breaks out. That's very bullish. Okay. Breakouts are bullish guys. We still got to watch out for the false breakouts of course. But I'll be very bullish. Okay. Now that is the bullish case scenario. The bear, the bear's case scenario is if, of course like always if we lose a support level. Okay. Because we like I said with this bull flag. Little intraday bull flag that I got here. We can always get a false breakout. So that means support must fail. All right, first support is 416, below that's 415, okay? 
So if you start losing support, that's your sign. You can start showing that. I, re I, I recommend playing it level to level. All right, wherever level you enter, look for the next support level down to the downside. Take profits there. Leave a small runner. Okay? Below 415 is 413.5, 412, and 410, critical level. All right? If 410 tests again, I highly doubt it will hold. The market makers gave us a, a couple of false breakdowns of that level already this past week. They like to set us up for failure. So most likely, they're going to get a lot of us retail traders thinking, okay, well, if it breaks down 410, it's possible that the false breakout, uh, a false breakdown can happen again and a recapture can occur. Is likelihood of it happening the next time is much lower. Okay, guys? So remember, we're starting with 416, 415, 413.5, 412, and 410, critical level. Okay, those are my support levels. Okay, please write it down or just rewind the video. You guys have my upside targets. You guys have my downside targets. Okay, you can use the back test and go strategy. I got a video that talks about it in the description below. Or you can just take a risk and, and enter on the breakouts or breakdowns. Okay, as you can see, even with my own trading, they don't always work out. Got to respect your stop loss. All right. I want you all to take pride in that. Risk management is something to be praised. Okay, I know as humans we can be stubborn and we want our trade to go our way, but we can't force our will upon the market. All right, we can only try to follow the price action as best we can and react in real time. Okay, which is what I try to do in my uh, Discord to help everybody out. Okay, so moving on, here's the VIX. We got that breakdown, okay, of the, this triangle pattern yesterday. Today showed follow through. It back tested that triangle pattern as a resistant and continued to go, to, you know, to go down. And also lost a 61.8 retracement level at 25.4. That's a very critical level. So for me to be bullish on VIX, it needs to recapture that level, 25.44 to start, and then get back above 26.12 and recapture this triangle pattern. If it does happen, that's very bullish. False breakdowns are bullish, guys. Okay. But as long as below, 25.4 is the first resistant. Watch for a back test at that level. And I'm favoring more downside all the way down to 22.3-ish. Okay? As long as VIX has more downside, it's possible that the SPY have more upside. So I do recommend using the VIX to help gauge the price action of the SPY. All right? And here is the triple Q. That's a bullish engulfing candle. Got very close to my 315 target. It's always a bummer. When it gets close to my target and doesn't quite hit it. But, you know, either way, we had a resistant level at 306.5 I spoke of yesterday that we lost. And I said if that recaptures, that's very bullish. And I'm so grateful it played out, all right? So if, let me know if, if it worked out, guys, um, if you took this trade or not. And here's another one, Dow Jones. Oh, let me go back to Triple Q. Okay, so 315 is still a top price target, all right? Um, resistant now is around 309.4 to 310. If that fails, I favor more downside. Okay, the moves and is, is are bigger in triple Q. Okay, um, they're not a you know, spy don't move as big as triple Q, at least you know, from, from what I see. All right, so my support levels they tend to be a little more separated from each other. Okay, but uh, yeah, 3 309.4 to 310 zone is first support for triple Q. As long as I hold, I, I think we can go test that 315, to, and I have a low resistance around 315.7, a cluster of resistance here based on my FIB levels. And if that is cleared, that will be extremely bullish, all right? And we could possibly go up and test 321.3-ish and then 326.2-ish, okay? All right, those are my targets for Triple Q, all right? Only bearish below uh, 309.4, all right? And here's Dow Jones. It went down and test that 325.5 support level. Very nice. Very nice bounce. Okay, the critical level it lost yesterday was 330.4-ish. Uh, Recapture that level. That's a false breakdown. All right, putting on, giving us a little higher high over here. And um, Yeah, that's technically a bullish engulfing candle, I think. All right, so as long as 330.4 holds, I'm bullish. 338 in play, okay? IWM also bullish. Okay. Got that back test of this trend line yesterday as a support. Today it showed follow through. Cleared 185.5 resistant level. Crushed it. Had some resistance around 188 ish. 
crush that all right so 190.5 is the next resistant level all right as long as 188 holds if that fails 185.5 ish then possibly a test of 181 back in play okay remember look for calls when we clear resistant look for puts when we break down support and here is apple looking very bullish apple just the bears couldn't get apple to break that 148.4 support level that's the 23.6 retracement level very critical that holds if we are to put a bottom in for apple okay definitely held today it opened below it but recaptured it beautifully right so i got the next critical resistance level at 152.3 based on this downtrend line okay if that clears that's the breakout 140 154.4 possibly go up and test 159.2 okay because remember breakouts are bullish all right, still got to watch out for the false breakout, of course. Always be nimble in this market. But play it level to level, and I'll only be bearish. I will only look for calls if 148.4 fails. Put more downside targets in play. 146.3 is 145, possibly down to 143, 141, and 138.7, okay? Now, Tesla, a beauty. Tesla is a thing of beauty, I tell you. I actually alerted Tesla today. Um very proud of this alert wrote it this morning around 8 55 a.m only bullish if 745.5 is cleared okay and then i had some price targets on it right there this morning tesla opened around 732.4 and it recaptured that 745.5 level and it went and hit many of my price targets 765 ish 778 ish Got, it got as high as 787.5 is as well. That's my 50% retracement level based on the May 4th high down to the May 5th low. May 25th low, excuse me. All right, so if you traded that, that was some awesome, awesome move. Lots of money was made. Still got, you know, it's looking bold. That's a nice body candle, okay? So we got to, let's see if it can clear that 787.5 is level. That's a very critical level. All right, it was a tough zone. For the bulls today to clear but it was still a massive move okay so if you're gonna get bearish watch that 765.7 ish level that fails that puts 745.5 back in play all right that's my equilibrium level as far as being bullish goes because if that fails i'm back to to being bearish and i'm gonna favor more downside all right there is some support around the 726 to 20, 727 zone um then 7 701 than 682 all right so we got a good amount of supports to the downside all right there is also support some support around 707 to 708 all right so lots of levels but the most important one i want you to watch is 765.7 all right as long as that hold could possibly get more upside okay we could get a pull back back test as support something like that all right but if that fails i'm i'm not favoring that 745.5 will hold it could but i'm less confident that it will all right, guys, so that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. This means a whole lot, all right? And if you watched it to the end, do me a favor. Comment down below your best dad joke, all right? I want to I wanna use it on my kids later so they can call me and tell me about how cringy I am later. All right, thank you guys so much. Peace.